I don't brag about stuff because I don't have to because I was there. So I don't have to brag about it because I was there. <laughs> and I haven't always made the best decisions in life personally, but I've made some pretty good ones as far as music goes and opportunities that I've had for whatever reason. I was in a band, Dread. It's Steve's band, as I was told so many times. But anyway, the version that I was in did a lot more than any of the other versions. But anyway, moving forward, we had some good opportunities. We opened up for a bunch of good people. Death, that's from the Human Tour. The shirt's not. I got the shirt later on, but we played with them on the Human Tour in Salisbury, Mass, at the Escape Club. You can still go there online and find the ticket stub that has our name on it. The Carcass from Reek of Putrefaction. We played with them on that tour in Boston at the Channel. That was in 19, um, 1990. And that was with Death, Carcass and Death. Death was on the Spiritual Healing Tour. So we played with Death twice. Spiritual Healing in 90 and then 91 on the human Inhuman Tour for the Human Album. And then Carcass was with Death the first time. So that was the Reek of Putrefaction tour. Just between that and Symphonies of Sickness, they were, they were on that tour. And then Brutal Truth, we played with them twice. This is from the first time from their album, Extreme Conditions Demand Extreme Responses. And they were awesome, of course. That was 91 or 92. Because this, this was on the Human tour. That was on the Death Inhuman tour. There was a bunch of bands that played at Salisbury Beach. Pestilence was there. And actually, when we played with Death on the Spiritual Healing tour, Pestilence was supposed to be on the gig, but they couldn't get visas to get into the country. They're from Holland. So it was just Death, Caucus, and Dread. You can still find a flyer from that. So, Brutal Truth. And then we played with them another time on their Kill Trend Suicide tour in... Um, 90... Six, yeah. Well, that was with Campbell Corpse, so that was on actually. That was 96, yeah, because that was the Campbell Corpse Vial tour. They were, they were at the Rat in Boston, so it was Brutal Truth, Campbell Corpse, Immolation, and us and another band. So, I've had a lot of good experiences. I haven't always been a good person, but I am today. So I think that's all that really matters. I've learned a lot of lessons about myself in life and things that I shouldn't have done and things that I wish I did differently, but I didn't. So you just move forward. But one thing I'm proud of is my own music. When I was in Dread, I was, I was very limited. That was a very limiting band. Cause you had to do things a certain way. Steve, he's my friend, but he's a dictator. And if you came up with an idea you didn't like, he would just shut it off right away instead of trying to entertain it. And I wrote the lion's share of the music after the first album. Those were all his songs, but of course we, we revolutionized them. Me and Mark Selig that joined the band from Necromancer. We joined from Necromancer and then joined Dread. And um, we put that band on the map, definitely. We had a lot of good opportunities. Steve. Steve is a pioneer. He did a lot of that stuff on his own, but as I was reminded many times, that was his band. So blah, blah, blah. Creator. We played with Creator in Boston. That was awesome. Creator was awesome. My brother-in-law, Jason, went up to the singer and he goes, you guys got any demos? And the singer, Millie, was like, fucking demos. What the fuck? Demos, man. Been around for years. He was so insulted. Caucus. That's from, we played with them, of course, with Death. That was uh, the Spiritual Healing Tour, Death, Caucus, and Dread. CBGB, we played there. I was drumming for that gig. Actually, I was drumming for the later gigs. I sang and played guitar, lead guitar, from 90 to 93. So the early opportunities, I was singing and playing guitar. And then after, from 95 to 97, which would have been Creator, Cannibal Corpse, and Brutal Truth, that was, I was drumming. So I drummed for the CBGB gig. That was a decent gig. Our bass player, Scott, just decided to move all of a sudden to Virginia. And he wasn't going to tell me. They were just, he was just going to go. So I was like, I called him. And I said, you know what? We don't need you. 
And we did every, all the gigs we did, we did with just two guitars, Steve and Mike McPherson from uh, Mortal Remains from the Cape. And it was awesome. And we were, we were scheduled to play. We had three gigs. We did a little tour. It was New Hampshire, Maine, and New York. And Marshall Shanklin, Steve said, we want to get Marshall on the bass. I'm like, no, 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 no offense to him. We have it down. Why bring in a new member and then all of a sudden show him the songs when we're going to play CB fucking GB? Are you kidding me? No, no, no. Let's try it. Let's try it. I'm like, all right. And he did a good job. But on one of the crucial songs at a part, he forgot the bass line and then quickly rushed it in here and numbered it. So, okay, you saved the day. But we could have done it without him is my point. And it, and it would have been just fine without him. No offense to Marshall. He had a lot of pressure, but we could have done it without him. That's what I'm saying. And we were tight as fuck without him anyway. So moving on. So I've had some good opportunities. I'm proud of that. So whatever I've done to offset that. Oh, well, you live and learn. You know what I mean? You live and learn. I learned a lot about myself and what I will allow myself to go through. First of all, I learned what I would allow myself to go through. All sorts of hardships and hardships that I inflicted upon the people around me, actually, because I was pretty selfish. But that comes with life, you know what I mean? And, um, I, and it was good that I did that, actually, because I learned from it. So be selfish. Be a total prick, because someday you're going to go, wow, I was such a dick. And until you're a dick, you can't realize that you're a dick. So there is that. Everything is learning experience, right? We always learn. We never really leave school. That's the thing. You never really leave school. You're always a learner. So I've learned a lot about myself. But I'm very, very proud of what I've done as far as music and writing and art and all sorts of other stuff that I've done that maybe people don't even know about. I've done a lot of podcasting, which is home recording. I record on topics that I know a lot about and I talk about them and they're really really good that's chronicast and this guy and shithouse rat so i'm proud of what i've done if somebody doesn't like it that's okay but on one of the music pages number one music.com i get an average of four thousand to forty five hundred plays a day that's pretty good I have a lot of stuff on there, so that average changes a little bit. You know, I can say, well, I just have a lot of stuff on there. So if you divide that by the number of songs and stuff that I have on there for content, it might be it might be a little less impressive, but I don't care about that. I don't care if one if it's one person every day. One day I tuned in and there was 40, 41,000 plays at, at about 9 in the morning. I took a picture of the page, a screenshot to prove it. 41,000 players at 9 in the morning. So, it comes and it goes. Other days, there's 2,000 players by 11 at night. I don't care about that. If it's one person that played one bit of my content, that's fine with me. If they don't play it, that's also fine with me. But I put it out there because I have something to say. So, that's what it is. I have something to say. I've learned a lot. I have a lot of experience. I was there. I don't have to brag. 